Craig wanted me, you know, I had been coming, I had known him from 1977. I was there in the room when Shirley Brown and came to visit Brown. And I had a beard and hair because I had been following Chatra Mas. So he saw everyone was shaved but me when he came in the room. So he was looking at me, you know, and I wanted to meet him. So I went up to him. And I said, uh, you know, uh, my name is Bhagavad Das. You're Narayan Maharaj, you should guess. Stained a couple of pleasantries, and then he said, yeah, why uh, have this here? So I said, I'm, I'm doing Chatur Mas Brak. I'm ek, ek din, ek bar, I'm eating one meal a day. And, 32 rounds and like this, I was explaining. He was like very happy to see that the young American brahmacharis were following Goyamat practices. So he took me by the elbow and he brought me over to the side of the bed. He said, come, come with me. I want to show you something, he said. So then he showed me Srila Prabhupada lying in the bed. And Prabhupada he had his two hands like this. And over his head, like this, while he's lying in the bed. He said, you see his hands? You see the way they are? He said, this is a mudra. Sacred mudra, he said. Then, he said, you see his head? His head was like, like this, and his back was all arched, you know, like. He said, you see how his head is arched? It was up like this. You see how his back is swaying? And then his two feet were like this. He said, you see how his feet on tiptoe? This is a special mudra, he said. Prabhupada was deeply asleep. He said, now your Prabhupada is dancing with Radha and Krishna. And then he started singing Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. And the, the young brahmacharis were there and they had these high tenor voices and he had a beautiful voice and it was just, we were all crying. So then it, he left and a couple of hours later Prabhupada came to consciousness and he said, I have just been talking with Krishna. And when he said that, Narayamar said he was dancing with Krishna, and now Prabhupada says he was talking with Krishna. That means Narayamar must be a pure devotee. That's the only way he knew that. You know, it's like, you know, that's how I first met Srila Narayamar. So then later, when he came to America, I used to visit him all the time when he would come. And I would give a donation, listen to him speak something, but I never got involved with his group, you know. So in 2003, he pushed me. He said, what is it with you? You come, you make a donation, you go away. <laughs> Why are you not listening to me? Why are you not hearing me? Why are you not staying around? I said, well, you know, I mean, I, oh, I know, I know. He said, I said, I'm doing business. I have, oh, you have business to do? So busy you are? Shouting at me. These men here gave up their business to come and listen to me? Why are you not listening? I said, well, you know, I need to go. And, oh, what do you need? You are not following carefully. I know you are not chanting. You are not doing anything. You are not doing going temple regularly. I know. I know what you are doing. And you are a senior man of Prabhupada. Why are you doing like this? Your Briyas Ashram has overtaken you? Why? Shouting. He was shouting at me. While he was doing that, I looked up at him and I could see Prabhupada, like, standing behind him. It was like, a mystical vision and I just like trembled and I realized Prabhupada was chastising me through him. So then I said, okay, okay, I'll listen to you. I'll stay here. <laughs> so then, you know, I, he gave me a lot of his personal attention. You know, but right from the beginning he told me, he said, I want you to preach. I know that you are a good preacher. I know you can explain this philosophy. I want you to travel everywhere and preach. So from the beginning, I got this idea 
that he was going, going to, you know, train me to preach. But he wanted to purify me of my material desires. So in Houston, he set me up for this huge embarrassment. I came into the room of the person's house and he was sitting, you know, on a, on a big couch. And everybody was sitting, like this many devotees, they were all sitting there. And he saw me and he said, oh, you have come, come, come here, come and sit down next to me. I said, oh God, I can't do that. <laughs> next to you? I, no, 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 it's okay. I'm watering you. You come and sit next to me. All right. I'm sitting next to him on the couch, right? So he said, I want to ask you a question. Okay. What would you do right now if a beautiful woman came in the room completely naked? <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I was completely tongue tied. Yeah, you know, I was a married man. I had a family and everything. But it was like I never expected him to ask me a question like this. I said, "Well, I, 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 I'm telling you." He said, "I know what you would do. You would have sex with her." I don't know. No, no, no. What he was trying to do was purify me of my attachments, you know, to sense gratification. And so he put me on this spot in front of everyone. I was like trembling, you know. So it was a, it was a very interesting experience. With him. How many years after you took sannyas from him? Oh, about six years later. And from that time I began seriously practicing brahmacharya so he was preparing me i knew okay i gotta get prepared so will you write about him as well yeah yeah but that's a separate book yeah that's another book and i'm gonna write it's like my my life with the saints about each one of them the Guru Pool was one of his most important projects. He wanted to see that the children were educated with love and care. While Mohan Anandi was discussing matters about the Guru Pool with Srila Prabhupada, <coughs> suddenly Srila Prabhupada noticed something. Is that mustaches? Srila Prabhupada asked. Mohan Anandi Das was trying to make like he did not understand. Oh, what Srila Prabhupada? Are you growing? Mustaches, Srila Prabhupada asked again, determined, pointing to his to his upper lip, determined to obtain an answer this time. Mohanananda Das smiled, and passing his hand over his face, he asked, Oh, you mean this? Yes, Srila Prabhupada shot back. Oh, you see, Srila Prabhupada, you wore a mustache when you were a Grihasta, so I thought that since I'm a Grihasta, it is all right. <laughs> No, Srila Prabhupada said. No mustaches. You should shave it immediately. Mohananda Das looked disappointed. However, to his credit, he accepted the instructions of Srila Prabhupada. He agreed to shave his mustache. Now we will return to the massage. I was massaging Srila Prabhupada's heart gently. He then fell asleep. A good sign that the massage was effective. I was now going to get some mustard oil to apply to Srila Prabhupada's legs and feet. As I looked down, I saw that I had spilled one drop of mustard oil on the floor. A group of ants had encircled the drop of mustard oil and were drinking from all sides. This was not a problem. However, some of the ants were more adventurous and were starting to go on the mat where Srila Prabhupada was sitting. I was frantic. I started trying to brush them off without hurting them. I was shooing them away from the mat so they would go in the opposite direction and Srila Prabhupada's feet. As I was making all this fuss, suddenly I heard the booming voice again. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, Srila Prabhupada, I exclaimed. The ants are running onto the mat and I'm trying to shoo them off without killing them, but they are headed toward your feet. Srila Prabhupada leaned forward and surveyed the scene. Then he took his hand and waved it over the ants and said, 
they will leave by themselves. I watched in astonishment as the ants on the mat changed direction and the ants in the circle lined up and walked in the opposite direction away from Srila Prabhupada's mat. Oh, I thought, this is something amazing. <laughs> then the booming voice again. Continue with the massage. Yes, Srila Prabhupada, I said, as I snapped out of it and returned to my service of massage and Srila Prabhupada's legs and all his feet. As I finished massaging Srila Prabhupada's legs and feet, I returned, as I was told, to massage Srila Prabhupada's back and spine to help him with his posture while walking. I was now placing my hands at his waist and stroking them up his back. Sometimes I was doing this so strongly it lifted Srila Prabhupada off the floor. When that happened, I would do it gently the next time, but eventually as I kept stroking, I would lift him up again. Srila Prabhupada said nothing, but I think I overdid it. I took him to the bathroom where his hot water was waiting for his bath. Then he dismissed me and I departed. Now, here is another story that gives you some insight into how Prabhupada actually felt about the quality of the massage I had administered to him. Every morning on Srila Prabhupada's morning walk, Dr. Patel would join and would begin verbally jousting with Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada would become disturbed by the constant challenges that Dr. Patel was aiming at Srila Prabhupada. After a while, the morning walk was no longer relaxing. So Srila Prabhupada asked the devotees to read Krishna books every morning on the walk and there would be no more conversations. Srila Prabhupada had said that the morning walk was supposed to be a soothing and relaxing time for him and Krishna book recitation provided that atmosphere. One particular morning, a few days after I had massaged Srila Prabhupada, I was walking with him on the morning walk while the Krishna book was being read. The story that they were reading that particular morning was the story of how Krishna and Balaram had entered Mathura. Finally, as they were reading, they came to the part where Krishna and Balaram were going to fight the wrestlers in the arena. The reader was describing what the two wrestlers looked like when they entered the arena. The description goes like this. They were two fully grown men with bodies like solid slabs of stone. Suddenly, Sri Prabhupada stopped walking. He turned around and he looked at me. And then he raised his cane and poked it in my chest. <laughs> you, he said, in a commanding voice. You are like those wrestlers. <laughs> I had understood immediately why, immediately why he was saying that. <laughs> And all the devotees on the morning walk were laughing. <laughs> Some of them said, oh, now we know what the wrestlers look like. <laughs> I was embarrassed and a little ashamed. What I realized some years later that was that Srila Prabhupada had purified me of any offenses I had committed when I did the massage simply by poking me in the chest where it came. He was so merciful that he did not want me to suffer for my ignorant acts and giving him too hard a massage. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada, for always looking out for our welfare, because you are our eternal father. And that's the end of this chapter. Enough? No, 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 I'm in the middle. Did you like it? Yes. <laughs> Interesting? It is. Did the guys follow me ever apologize? Huh? Did the ghost follow me? I don't time. think so. Uh, I don't think I don't he ever went to Prabhupada. <laughs> so then he said, You should sit here with me tonight. I said, Guru Dave, everybody that's sitting here is wearing saffron. And I'm not wearing saffron. I said, But I want the Guru to wear saffron. I said, Okay, I'm ready. I'll put on saffron. He said, No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I have to prepare you. <laughs> He was like always doing it, in and out, in and out. And he told me like three times in America, I want a big sannyasi like you. And then when I got there, and he told me, I want you to wear saffron. And then he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> so then 
the next day, I go to his room, and I ask him if he'll give me saffron. I said, no, 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 I'm not giving you saffron. You're not ready for saffron. You should just go and do something else. <laughs> So I went and told all the sannyasis. I said, he, he doesn't want me to take him. He said, no, no, he's testing you. He's testing you. You have to push him. You have to push him. <laughs> oh, all right. And, uh, how can I convince him that I'm serious? So then I went to the store and I purchased three sets of saffron clothes. I was, you know, saffron shirts and kurtas and dhotis and, you know, shawl and the whole thing. So then I came back about uh, five days later. You know, it was a codicy morning. And uh, I gave him a 10,000 rupee donation. Then I gave him this beautiful picture of Radha and Krishna. And then I took out <laughs> the saffron cloth. And I put it in front of me and go, what's this? I said, did you give me saffron today? He said, started asking me questions. You know. He said, do you have any debts? I said, no. He said, are you living with your wife anymore? I said, no, we, we separated. She, she lives in one apartment, and then I don't even have an apartment anymore. <laughs> and then he looked at me, and I, you know, I couldn't imagine how he figured this out. You know, it was a very day. You know. He said, no. Oh. And she's with another man now, isn't she? And I said, uh, yeah, sure, probably she is. <laughs> like, sure, her name she is. And then he looked at me and said, good. <laughs> it was like, sure, there's no way back now. <laughs> so <I> said, okay. <laughs> so then uh, he told Bridget, oh, bring, bring this book. So he brought the book. And opened it up, and it's a picture of uh, Prabhupada and Bhakti Kagamkesha. So then he took the saffron cloth and he touched it to the feet of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhakti Kagamkesha. And he said, From their hands, my hands, your hands. And that's how I got Bhakti Kagamkesha. And then that was 2006, and then two years later, I took Sanyas in. Uh, in uh, Mayapur on uh, a Navadri rather than a uh, Gorpurnima. Yeah. I got the mantras on Gorpurnima and I got the Danda the next day. Jagannath. Jagannath. Uh, what? Jagannath Mishra Zuksha. So that was how I ended up getting Saffron. I remember once when we were walking in, in, in Florida and I was introducing, I, I was telling him about one of his disciples because I had told Gurudev about some of the problems that my wife and I were having because I, I kept trying her, trying to get her involved, you know, and she didn't want to get involved. You know. But all of his disciples are fanatics. I don't want to associate with fanatics. I'm not a fanatic like that. I, you know, she just didn't want to have anything to do with it. I tried first getting her. I had Gaur Govinda Maharaj in our house, bathing his feet. I bathed as I bathed his feet, and I, and I had my little son, Shringa, who was three years old, he was bathing Gaur Govinda Maharaj's feet, so he got so much mercy in Shringa. Now, he's like so attached to Shringa Gaur Govinda Maharaj from that, from that foot bathing, you know? I kept trying to get my wife to get initiated by Gaur Govinda. No, no, I said, come on, he's a pure devotee. No, no, he's a disciple of the and then I tried with Narayan Maharaj, and she just, she just didn't want to do it. She had never been initiated after Rameshwara fell down. So she, she just said, oh, you're my husband, and you're initiated, so that's all. I don't know what to do. So we are on a morning walk, and I told Gurudev, you know, we're separating. We're going to be separated. So because she just doesn't want to get involved. So then, this other devotee, Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi Bhatti, he was having the same trouble with his wife. She didn't want to get involved. 
So we're on the morning walk and so I, I told him, I said, Guru Dave, this is your disciple, uh, Indu Pali, uh, Lakshmi Pali. And, 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 and he's having the same trouble with his wife that I'm having with my wife. He said, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> very good, he said. I'm very happy. <laughs> he was always like, you know, teasing us. You know? And then he would tease me and Padmanabha Maharaj and Nemi Maharaj. He would say, say to Padmanabha, so how many times married? Uh, twice, Guru Dave. Nami Maharaj, how many times married? Uh, twice, Guru Dave. Baba Maharaj, how many times married? Uh, twice, Guru Dave. <laughs> Not learned the first time? <laughs> I was that my first wife couldn't have children. So I married the second one. In America, you can't keep two wives. <laughs> We're divorced and I'm married with someone who can give me kids. But, and, you know, those are, you know, he was, you know, he would tease us at this. But then he was very, you know, he appreciated our preaching. Somebody complained to him some one time that. I wasn't doing, I wasn't collecting a lot of money for some project or something that he wanted me to do. He said, yes, but he's a very good preacher. The way he's explaining everything, he's a very good preacher. Because many of his disciples have written back to him talking about the lecture that he's doing. Anyway, there's just a few things. He told me once in 2009 that, uh, Italian festival. I want that you should travel around the world and preach. He said, I attracted so many people by telling beautiful pastimes of God. He said, but they don't understand the fundamentals. So I want that you should go everywhere and teach the fundamentals. He said, you know how to teach them very nice. So I like that he instructed. So Anyway, those are a few stories that you, uh, <coughs> you wanted to hear some stories. Did you like those? <laughs> All right. Enough.